Good morning, folks. The Iris database having some server trouble this morning. Hopefully you were able to hop on yesterday, catch some of the terrific new images. Remember, folks, the full level 1 and 2 image sets should be available later this month. The goal was to have real-time access hubs like we have for SDO, Stereo, Gong, Soho, etc. Anyway, on to today's top story. This is Climate Corporation, climate.com. They are an all-agra coverage and prediction specialist that also offers personalized forecasting and other services. They're the top story of today because they were just bought by Monsanto in a bid for major integration of services, still aiming to sell their genetically modified seeds by increasing their value offer. Jackals. Observer-level website members who caught Chapter 2 of Starwater remember Galise 1214B. I showed her because she's a super Earth with water vapor in the atmosphere. Turns out that the highest level water vapor on that planet is actually plasmic. I'm linking Ignacio's ISON prediction here. I mentioned it yesterday after seeing it on spaceweather.com. Bruce Gary's been saying this stuff for weeks. Long distance discharge event, fading brightness and breakup potential is precisely the type of thing we do not want to see. Folks, I can't say this enough. Most of you are waiting for a wondrous sight or a killer solar flare, but for months my focus has been the disintegration events before 1 AU, which will be reached by the comet around November 1st. We still get meteor showers from 200 year old comets. This is year number one for ISON. The angle of approach is very, very shallow, and just four days after passing Earth's orbital line, Ison punches through the ecliptic plane of Earth, meaning that this comet is very close to intersecting the exact path that Earth will take around our star about 75 days before we get to that January 15th location over on that side of the sun. Last article, if you are a Thunderbolts fan, Walter Russell, James McCanny, anything Electric Universe, you're welcome. Boy in event mode here. Either a 600-foot tsunami found a way to be inconspicuous, or that's not a real reading. North of that, we have only a few days before the Koreas are tagged with this typhoon. Low has begun running across the Eurozone, causing storm conditions, with a steady one to the east bringing colder weather as it pulls hard to the south. Rain arriving at the South Island tonight, and in Perth by tomorrow night. Meanwhile, the United States has two serious weather issues. First. Central Low is a major player. He's going to create severe storms on the leading edge and maybe tornadoes. And driving so hard, he's stealing major cold from the north and could make snowstorms and stealing moisture from Hurricane Karen in the Gulf. Karen, by the way, is ready to pound the coastlines. I advised everyone last night, if you're nearby, get prepared. By tonight, some stores may be low on stocked items, so be smart. And that includes you folks up in the foothills. A little creek in a valley or a 20-year flood zone is not the place to be over the next five days. You remember the CME we didn't get to see yesterday morning. NASA said it will miss Earth. And while NOAA initially showed impact to Earth later in the week, they have all but removed that prediction now. There is no solar flaring of note, just some small sea flares, and the slight uptick is due to the complex and active regions, but this is still pitifully weak for solar max. Solar wind calming down now. The geomagnetic turbulence appears over for this event, and the radiation influx is gone now as well. We have two incoming coronal holes, one north, one south. ISWA diagnoses their power as moderate but rising indeed. The past day has seen a few locational upticks, but the six magnitude mark has not been hit in October, and if the power keeps rising as these holes face Earth, we could see a change there. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.